One of the most commonly misunderstood teachings in the Catholic Church is the teaching on the saints. And this is misunderstood by Protestants and Catholics alike. So I'd like to use this day, I'm recording this video on the Feast of All Saints, and I'd like to use it to talk about the role that the saints play in our Catholic lives. When we talk about the saints, one of the fears many people get is that we're talking about people who are dead, so we're trying to commune with the dead, and then we're also trying to mediate our way to God. We're not going straight to Jesus himself, but instead are asking for mediators. So I'd like to address those two concerns. First of all, when it comes to the issue of the saints being dead, and are we trying to commune with the dead? Yes, they're, they're dead, but they aren't out of existence. They're in heaven with God. They're living that life in heaven with God. And as such, they're part of the body of Christ. You see, when we talk about the body of Christ or the church in the Catholic tradition, we're talking not just about what we call the church militant, which would be the church here on earth, but we're talking about the church as the entirety of all believers spanning all time and all places and all of history. So that would include the people who have gone before us and who have died and are now in that life with God in heaven. So the saints are people who are very much part of our church. And so when we ask them for, our, for prayers, we're asking members of our church to pray for us. And this really isn't too far out of the realms of anything that a Protestant would do. Protestants certainly would feel comfortable asking people to pray for them who are part of their church community to understand the importance of community and communal gatherings. If we look at scripture, we can see St. Paul is continually talking about how he's praying for the various communities that he's writing to and how he asks them for his prayers too. So this notion of praying for one another is something that's always been part of our tradition. As Catholics, we do tend to turn to the saints because they are in that life with God. And so we believe that they can pray perhaps a little better than we can because they have a more clear understanding of what we need. You know, so often we pray for the wrong thing. But the saints, we believe, will help us to pray for the right thing. And so they can be helpful. Now, this doesn't mean that we don't go to Christ with our needs, too. We certainly do that. We can do both. We can honor the saints while at the same time asking them for our prayers. And at the same time, that doesn't compete with going to God, going to Christ, who is the sole mediator between humanity and and God. And when we say he's the sole mediator, we don't mean that other people can't pray for us. What we mean is he's the sole means who brings about our salvation. He's the one who ultimately brings about salvation for the human race. Nobody else does that. So the saints don't bring about our salvation, but they certainly can pray and intercede for us. And to the extent that they do that, we're thankful. Now, one of the things that often happens is sometimes Catholics can take these devotions a little too far, where it almost seems like they're idolatrizing the saints. They, they become false gods, if you will. And we have to be careful as Catholics not to do that, because the saints, we remember, are people. They are creatures. They are not God himself. One of the other dangers that we Catholics tend to get into is this sense where we look at the saints as being people who are so far above us that we could never be like them. And that defeats the whole point of the saints, because what the saints are supposed to be for us Catholics are role models. And see, if our role model is somebody who we can never live up to, who is so far beyond us, they cease to be a role model and instead become an idol. And that can be very dangerous. But if we put them in their proper context, they're role models and they benefit us. And one of the great things about the saints is they show us that there's not just one path to holiness or one way to enter into that life with God. There's a great diversity amongst the saints. I mean, you've got saints who were preachers, such as Dominic, who went out and could master words and could speak very eloquently about Christ. You have other saints, like St. Francis, who would argue that you don't need to speak. You can do it with your actions. You have saints who spend all day in contemplative prayer. You have saints who go out into the world and work with the poor, such as Mother Teresa. So you've got many different ways to holiness, many different paths to holiness. All of them, of course, are inspired by Christ and are geared towards orienting our lives towards Christ. The value of the saints show us that there's a diversity in our holiness, and there's many paths that we can take to follow Christ and many different ways that that can be manifested in our lives. But they also show us that people just like us, people who are sinners, people who have their quirks and their faults, can live out this call to holiness. It's not an unrealistic goal or an unrealistic expectation that we have calling people to holiness. Rather, it's something that can be done and has been done by the saints. And so they serve as our great role models as well as our great intercessors in the church.